Hey everyone, Jenna Hart here. A couple weeks ago, I did a video on my NaNoWriMo prep in my bullet journal, and it was so popular that I thought maybe I would share the rest of what I've put in my writer bullet journal so far. Now, just a little warning, I have terrible penmanship, I'm not artistic, and I'm not even visually creative. Uh, and if you are like me, this video will probably encourage you and inspire you to bullet journal uh, if you've been putting it off because you are worried about maybe your penmanship or not being creative. Uh, for those of you that are creative and have these beautiful bullet journals, uh, my spreads may not be very inspiring around that, but perhaps the items that I am tracking or putting into the bullet journal uh, might help you if you are a writer and have a writer bullet journal. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Like other bullet journals, mine starts with the index where I can keep track of where I can find all the information that I'm putting into the bullet journal, which is one of the nice things about bullet journaling. Normally I like things categorized and organized uh, by tabs and everything. So this is a new way of tracking, but so far I've found it um, to be just fine, that it's okay if things are going in the book out of order because I can easily find them in the contents. Now my opening page is I basically have my writing calendar. It's my writing project calendar. So over the next three months, I have what I'm editing, what I'm writing, and what I am plotting. And depending on where these end up during the next month, hopefully they will move to a new spot. So the book that I'm plotting in October should move to writing in November, uh, and any book that I was writing in October should move to editing uh, in November. And this just helps me keep track of all the books I have going on at the moment, where they are in the process and what I need to work on, and then my goals for getting them done as well. If I were to redo this grid, I would also include a uh, column having to do with publishing so that I could set the publishing date uh, and publishing tasks uh, that need to happen with those books. But this is a really good overview to where I am at any given moment working on my books. December's open because I'm waiting just to see how far I'm going to get in November uh, with my projects. And of course this cozy that I'm editing, it might come back to me from my publisher in December. So then I would need to uh, work on any changes they've asked for. Uh, in NaNoWriMo uh, in December, that book probably won't be ready for editing. I mean, I'll have a, a good uh, draft, but usually by the end of NaNoWriMo, I might have my 50,000 words, but I haven't actually finished the book. Most of my books, are between the 65 and 75,000 word mark. Uh, but again, it just allows me at an overview to see my goals and plans for my writing uh, coming up in the new year. Again, it's a little bit open. The only thing I know for sure is I wanna have uh, th uh, the Valentine books, the first three books put together in a box set to come out in February. Now the next page is where I keep track of my data. Uh, for my website and social media. This is not something I've tracked a lot in the past, so I'm starting to do it now. Uh, hopefully I'm, everything is growing. Uh, in the new year, I plan to set goals to really uh, boost the growth. Over here, I have my blog and YouTube video ideas, and I divided it into content geared towards readers versus content geared towards writers. As a writer, I wanna attract people who read the type of books that I write. So I wanna be sure to have things that are of interest to them uh, that will make them wanna to come to my blog and see my videos. Uh, but the writer community is really a wonderful community. They're so supportive and helpful. I have learned so much by reading blog posts and watching videos of other writers and I wanna participate in giving back uh, to others as well. 
On the next page, I have my marketing ideas. These are things that I have not uh, done, but I've heard about or someone told me about. So I'm writing them down. So the next time I do a marketing update, which I do every couple months or so, I can look at adding one of these, especially if something I'm doing isn't working. I'd rather try and replace it with one of these and see if I can get better results. And then this is a list of some of the marketing resources. I don't have them all written down here, but I have a few. And these would be places that would help with things like setting up a blog tour or helping you get reviews or maybe it's educational materials. Uh, I, I do buy online courses that I hope will help me sell more books. Uh, so these are the types of things that I would write here. The next page are my story ideas and I have them covered just uh, so they will be a surprise when they come out. Uh, I left the top open because I am talking about them. These are ones that I am currently working on. Death of a Debtor's Cozy Number no. 1, Valentine 6, uh, and then I'll be writing Death of a Coupon Queen uh, in NaNoWriMo. Uh, down here I include a key that tells me where I am in the process of each story. So if it's just the idea, um, have I actually started anything on it? Do I have a completed draft? Uh, is it in the editing phase or has it gone to an editor? And then of course, is it published? Um, you will see here, I actually have a couple ideas that I started. Uh, I am a panster and sometimes stories will come to me and I see them in my brain like a movie. And so sometimes it's so vivid like that, I can actually sit down and write them. And it's usually the opening scenes that I can see. So I have two books here where uh, one of them, I actually have a couple of chapters and another one I have about half of the opening scene in it. Uh, written down and then that's all I've written because that's all I know about them at this point again I'm a panster so uh, these things come to me but they don't always come to me fully formed matter of fact I've never had a story come to me fully formed uh, usually I just let the story percolate a little bit and each you know I'll get a new scene I'll come and write that down I'll get a new scene and write that down and then a lot of times while I'm writing uh, things will come to me and in that case I just have to trust the process I, I just have to sit down and write. Uh, so I do have starts on these stories here. And then I left a page for more ideas uh, because I plan on writing lots of books. Uh, the next page is where I'm keeping track of my inventory. This is something I usually track on my computer uh, in my financial software because at tax time you're, you're supposed to put that information in. Uh, but I don't always have my computer on so I want a place to write down all the information and in a glance I can see if I need to order books. And then over here I have my book sales page and these are just abbreviations of all my books that are currently published and on the market and then September October November December so these are all the months and uh, basically I'm wanting to keep track number of units sold and then the amount of money um, I also wrote down uh, this is the southern heat series so drawn to her meant to be wed to you and after I put them in I realized I do not get monthly data on those books. Those are traditionally published. So every six months or so I get a royalty report. Uh, so next time I do this grid, I'm gonna leave those off and just use this for my independent books or the books that I'm giving away for free. And then I will have a separate uh, section where I can track uh, the, the book sales, my royalty reports. Uh, the next section is just a lot of information that I've been pulling together because although I am a panster, I do want to plot more. I don't like getting stuck in my writing. Uh, Valentine 6 has taken forever to write because I have been stuck a lot and they just, uh, the characters just haven't been very helpful in telling me their story. Uh, so these are just some notes and things that I've been taking about plotting and organizing a story. Uh, to make sure that I have all the important elements in there, but also I'm hoping uh, to plot in advance. Now, a lot of times after the fact, after I've written a story, I do try to go through and I check my scenes and I, and I check uh, basically the story arc to make sure I have all the elements in there of a good story. My goal now is to do it in advance. Uh, and again, this is just more uh, information and ideas on plotting and uh, 
uh, this uses an, uh, also uh, an ACT system, um, but it's written down. So it's basically this, but it's written down. So we have inciting event, just like we have inciting event here. Now this one actually has, you know, where in the book it should happen and the word count. And I ignore this stuff because that's just too much detail uh, for me. I just, if I had to sit and make sure I hit those pages, uh, I would stress out a little bit. It would feel too much like homework. Um, it would feel constrained. So in my mind, I just want to have a sense of these are the things that I need to cover and about where in the book they need to be covered. Um, I have elements of a good scene, which is essentially a checklist. Each scene should have at least one element from this first group, at least two elements from the second group. And uh, this is the bonus category that I could have or not have something from that. Um, and any scene that doesn't have uh, something from group one and group two uh, is probably a scene you need to delete because it's probably slowing your story down. Uh, so I find this really helpful to make sure that your scenes are doing what they're supposed to be doing for the story or character growth. And if you have a scene again that doesn't do that, you either have to add these elements in or maybe you can incorporate uh, that scene into other scenes that do have this information. Now I did in my NaNoWriMo video, I do have um, a grid here. And these are um, from Jamie Gold's website and I'll include a link to it uh, so you can check it out if you want to. But in this one, you write down the scene and then again, you check, does it have one from here? Does it have two from here? And this is the bonus section. And again, it's a good way to go and make sure that your scenes are all doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, which is telling a great story and not boring or uh, making your reader uh, fall asleep. Uh, the next, again, is just another story structure uh, outline. This is for a mystery. And again, it's really detailed. It's something that I probably would feel overwhelmed by. But just getting the overview, especially looking at the acts, and this is a four act thing, you know, again, making sure that I'm including all the elements that need to go in a mystery um, and they're about where they need to be in the book. Uh, there are mystery readers that if there isn't a dead body by a certain point, chapter three or something, uh, that they will put the book down. So uh, it is important uh, to deliver what your readers are expecting. Here I have character information, and these are just reminders to me about the most important parts of what makes a great character. Um, and it isn't their hair color or their favorite TV show, it's that they have a goal, that they're dealing with internal and external conflict, that they have a temperament and personality and values uh, that we can see based on the things that they say and do. Uh, they have a past that influence uh, their motivation, their beliefs and their behavior, and that they have a flaw. And then these are just reminders that traits such as how they look or their career is only important as it serves to reveal who the character is or some aspect of the story. So their favorite TV show doesn't really matter unless it tells us something about the character. And then here's a reminder about how do these traits uh, that I give a character, how do they manifest in the story to reveal who the character is? Because I can't just tell you she's outgoing. Uh, you need to see that she's outgoing based on the things that she says and does in the story. Down here we have character motivations, which are crucial to uh, not only having an interesting character, but to uh, make your story interesting. And I think I got this from Boho Berry. I will uh, research it and include the link to it. Uh, so that uh, you can uh, check it out in more detail. Uh, next I have brain dump, which is just places to write stuff down. Now, if I visualize a story idea and I have where I can sit down and write those opening scenes, uh, that is going to go on my story list. Um, especially if it's something that I'm really feeling like I want to write. If, I, if I'm not sure I want to write it, I would put it here. Or if I just have some sort of kernel of an idea, uh, that is something that I would put here. Uh, the next page, I actually go into specific projects here. So this is my checklist uh, to finish the Valentine's 6 book and all the things I need to do from where I am right now 
uh, to get it published and uh, sold. And then of course, here is my checklist for my first coupon uh, cozy book. Uh, that's what I call it, Death of a Debtor is a Coupon Cozy. And this again is my checklist from where it is now. I'm actually in revision right now and we'll get it to the editor shortly. Uh, tell when it comes out. And I do have this tracking here to show me where in the revision process I am. When I revise, I do whole chapters. I never stop in the middle of a chapter. Uh, and this way I know, okay, I just need to go to chapter 12 uh, and start uh, revising there because the rest are already done. This is my character list for Deadly Affair, uh, which is the sixth Valentine book. So I have my characters, their age, and their story function. And that is something that was in the NaNoWriMo video that I did. Uh, and then this is my, what I call the murder wheel. I also had one of these in my NaNoWriMo uh, video uh, for the coupon cozy that I am plotting the second book of that um, and this is just gives me a visual and important notes and clues and things like that that I need to have when I'm writing the story so I have the victim in the middle uh, and then I have he uh, here I have uh, who the suspects are, how the suspect and the victim are related. And then I have notes like, you know, um, did they have the opportunity to do the murder? Uh, what is their motivation for doing the murder? Um, I also often include notes that are like the clues that um, my protagonist would think that they did the murder and things like that. Um, and these are my final notes going into uh, book six of the Valentine Mysteries. Uh, and um, these are just uh, things that I have uh, written down and I put them in sticky notes so I can move them around or change them or take them out or add to them as I'm finishing up the story. Now this makes it look like I'm a plotter and of course I have plotted this bit, but these bits were not known to me until recently. And I've been working on this book for a long, long time. Um, so you can see as a panster, I write what I know, but then often I'm not sure where to go next. Often it will come to me while I'm writing, but sometimes, um, and of course uh, that has happened in the sixth book, I, I just, I really got stuck. But lately uh, things have been coming to me, so I'm writing it down and I'm on the downhill run uh, to finish that book. Uh, the next section is my NaNoWriMo section, which I did show in my video, uh, and I'll include a link to that if you wanna check it out. Uh, and then uh, this next part is actually a variety of different types of plotting methods. And again, I want to be able to plot more than I do. And uh, I don't want to have specific things. If, if the plotting outline has too many details, uh, that does overwhelm me because a lot of times I cannot answer the question. Um, but it does give me a sense of different types of plotting methods, things that I can look at. Uh, it helps me recognize what is uh, important. And, um, and, so, and it's also, I'm you know, searching what is the best way for a writer like me who writes like I do to be able to plot and at least get enough information down that I don't get stuck. So these are just some of the different plotting methods. If you watch other writers' uh, YouTube videos, uh, you will see a lot of them will have uh, some sort of plot structure like this that they go through when they tell you how they plot. Uh, this is the Save the Cat Beat sheet from Blake Snyder. Um, it was started in screenwriting but has been adapted to writers and in a lot of ways looks like the same um, curve or writing arc that we showed before it's just written kind of as a list so you know you have your opening you have a catalyst which I see is the inciting event uh, you have sort of your crisis and climax all is lost uh, so in a lot of ways this is the same thing just written a little bit differently um, over here we have the different uh, pyramid types and this is uh, the one like I had showed earlier and this is the one that I tend to gravitate to the most because really I'm looking at getting five basic plot points and I feel like I should be able to do that. If I can um, get the five basic elements of my story into here I feel like I should be able to connect them as I'm writing. Um, a lot of times I only have one or two when I start writing. 
Um, this is another curve which is essentially like the pyramid except it actually shows here uh, instead of just one direct upward movement for rising action it shows that sometimes action rises and falls that there's sometimes a downward movement you do want to give your uh, readers a reprieve every now and then you know you don't want to have their heart racing the entire time you do want to keep them interested and involved uh, but uh, you do want to have kind of moments of a reprieve uh, and then you build up again um, and then in meteor rays is not something I'd actually see myself doing um, basically the book starts in the middle um, and it uses flashback and it's very tricky to use that without um, having it become a problem or become boring if you've ever read a book that goes back and forth in time you know some of them they do it really well and others um, I, I find really frustrating uh, so that's a tricky way to write a book uh, next I have the hero's journey and this is uh, the outline of Joseph Campbell's uh, version of it. He's the one that basically um, in studying myth and folklore and all those things came up uh, with how mythological stories come together. And so this is basically his list. And then I also included the visual uh, that uh, many people use. Uh, that's It's this only in a visual format. Um, Hiller's journey can be fairly adaptable, but I always see it being a quest story. So I always think of Wizard of Oz or Star Wars uh, in the hero's journey. I do have a book that I am, I actually started it. It's one of the ones on the start list uh, that could actually fit in the hero's journey. Um, I do not see my mysteries and others, um, you know, when I visualize them. And it's not that I couldn't use hero's journey for a mystery or romance. I, I think I probably could um, but I actually uh, see it more um, either as the pyramid that we showed before or a three-act structure and you know these act structures sometimes you'll see them in four and five act but for me the three act you know has enough detail without overwhelming me and feeling like you know I have to fill in the blanks of 47 different things and and I don't know the answer yet to them in my story um, this just helps me be able to pick the major things that I need to cover um, as I try to plot my story in um, the cozy that I'm plotting right now um, I do have um, the first act it is plotted but to be honest the first act is almost always that's the thing that I usually do know when I start writing so uh, for me the challenge is working through um, act two and act three and that's basically what I've started working on now uh, and uh, that is all I have right now in my bullet journal I see the next pages uh, where I will be uh, putting in the information about the book that I am plotting right now, uh, the first act, um, and then hopefully uh, plotting these other acts uh, in more detail than I have already. So when I go into NaNoWriMo, um, I won't stall out. I'll be able to get those 50,000 words and get them done. So that is essentially uh, my writer bullet journal and what I have in it so far. Uh, I anticipate I'll have more stuff uh, related to projects, but I'm always watching other YouTube videos or going to Instagram or Pinterest and seeing what other writers are doing. If you're a writer with a bullet journal and you have some cool stuff in it, I would love to hear about it. Maybe you can leave a comment uh, down below and um, I would definitely check it out. Uh, so that's it for today. This is Jenna Hart wishing you peace, love, and happily ever after.